There is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together from Proverbs chapter 21 verse 20. There is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it. It's very obvious that there are great differences in the possessions that people have. Some have a lot of treasure, nice things. Others live in squalor. Why is that so? Well, a large part of it is the way in which we deal with the things that we have. God gives resources in this world and gives opportunities to all people. But we don't all use the things that God gives us in the same way. And so Solomon is suggesting that those who accumulate nice things and have good food in their house, it is because they are dealing with things in a wise manner. But those who lack these things, it is because they have not utilised the things that God has given them um, in a wise manner. Instead, they have squandered the resources. They have spent their money on things that are transitory and temporary rather than on things that will sustain them in life. I'm thinking of the words that Jesus said to his disciples. In Matthew 6, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And in Luke 12, Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? Now, of course, while God feeds the birds, they must still go out and find their food, sometimes travelling thousands of kilometres. God doesn't put their food in a bird feeder so that they don't have to utilise their searching abilities. And so, while things are there for us to utilise, we must have our eyes open. We must go out of the nest and find the opportunities that God has given to us. And having found those things, we are to use them wisely. There is a lot that is said about wisdom in the scriptures. And wisdom is simply that ability to make wise choices in life. God doesn't control those choices in the sense that we have no option. He provides, but it is up to us to respond and to utilise. To ask, to seek, to knock. This proverb is true regardless of the scale on which it is applied. So there are some poor families who live in a single room and yet they have some treasures and the house is always tidy and there is always food and the children are clean. That is a house where there is wisdom. There are other people who may dwell in a large house but it's not tidy and it's not clean and the treasures there were accumulated by others and are not cared for and that wealth withers away because they use the wealth that others have accumulated just for their own pleasure. God expects us to be wise in our dealings and we see that in the examples of the lives of people particularly in the Old Testament situation where Israel was a society. When we come to the New Testament we find that There is a Gentile society and Christians tend to be the minority and the poor people within that society. So there are not many rich and famous and powerful within the early church. But there were a few people who had lands and estates and they hosted the church on their property. Philemon, Priscilla and Aquila, Simon the Tanner, Cornelius the Centurion, Mary's house in Jerusalem, Lydia's house in Philippi, a few people who had wealth, who used their wealth for the kingdom of God. Gaius in John's third epistle. When the Lord Jesus exhorts us not to lay up treasure on earth, he's not saying that we should squander our treasure, but rather that we should invest it in the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, we should be diligent, we should work hard, We should utilise the things that we have wisely, 
John prays that Gaius will prosper because Gaius was very busy using his wealth to bless the saints. And so the more that Gaius prospered in his business, the more opportunity he had to bless the saints. And John had no hesitation praying that material blessings would come to Gaius, that he would prosper in his business, because he knew Gaius was investing that in the kingdom of heaven. He was not building up treasure on earth. He was simply a channel through which these things would flow to others who had need. The point is that you can't give if you do not have. And the little bit that you do have, that is in your discretion, you can invest it, you can give it, or you can squander it. And obviously there needs to be a balance between the things that we do. We need to buy the food that we need to eat. But do we really need the Lamborghini? Can we just get by with a Holden? Of course we can just get by with a Holden. Because either can be written off in an instant, in an accident. But as Jesus taught us, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. David started off as a shepherd but he accumulated great wealth through his successes in life. And what was he going to do with that wealth? He was setting it aside for the building of the temple of God. He wanted God to be known and glorified by his people. And so he always spoke to them about God. He gave them all the psalms that they might sing about God and rejoice in their God in their daily lives. God blessed him materially and God blessed Solomon materially with blessings. And Solomon particularly talked about being wise in the way that we live our lives. And that's why he's writing to us here. Because there will be evidence of our wisdom in our houses. There will be food on the table for our families. The last chapter of Proverbs celebrates the wise woman, the virtuous woman her industry, but it is so that she can bless others, not just that we can accumulate for ourselves. Hezekiah made a huge mistake. He had acquired a lot of treasure and wealth, and he was showing it off to the Babylonians. Isaiah said, What have they seen in your house? Everything, Hezekiah said. Isaiah said, Well, it's all going to be carried away to Babylon. And it was. All that was left of Jerusalem was a pile of burnt stones. There is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But a foolish man squanders it. And so we've added the New Testament perspective from the teaching of the Lord Jesus. The wise man has invested it in the kingdom of heaven.